today I'm going to share with you how to remove extremely harsh and impossible shadows hoping that you'll also remove it from your life as well. A couple months ago, actually a couple years ago, I had made a video about removing harsh shadows and back then we used complicated masks and all of that stuff but right now I've improved upon my technique and you don't have to use any of that. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. When you have a shadow this harsh, just brightening it won't solve the issue because there's going to be color differences, there's going to be a lot of different differences and also the lighting inside of the shadow area is going to be a bit different because the main light is of course not going there. So we need to create a kind of an illusion to help us work. First of all, let us target the shadows and brighten it up for it. You guessed it right, we're going to create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choosing curves. And instead of using masks, we're going to use something else. First of all, just brighten it up like so. Secondly, let's double click on the right hand side of this layer. This opens up the layer style dialog box and you know where we are going with this. In the blend if section, we need to take it away from the bright areas. So let's move it right there and we are taking it away from the bright areas of the underlying layer or the layer that lies under it. So we need to play with the underlying layer sliders and we need to take it away from the bright areas. So let's take the slider on the right to the left like so. Now of course this is going to be a bit harsh. So I'm going to stop right about there, hold the alt key or the option key click on it to make the transition a little bit smoother. Maybe we're going to stop right there. Now we cannot make it absolutely smooth because shadows and fall offs are different in different areas. This seems to be about right for now. Hit OK. Now as you can see the colors are a bit different here and there. So first of all let's take away the colors so that it's not distracting us anymore. We're going to recolor this later. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and pick any color, grey, white, black, any color with zero saturation. Hit OK and change the blend mode to color. Now this is different from just creating a hue saturation adjustment layer and decreasing the saturation. If you want to learn more about it, check out this video on check layers later. But for right now, we have taken the colors away and it's no more distracting us. So we can get back to our curves by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer. Properties will open up and then you can play with this to match it. I believe this works best. Now let's close it. Now we need to limit it just to this shadow area. For it we need to create a basic mask. So select the lasso tool and let us make a selection around this shadow. Give it a bit of space so that we have something to work upon. Whoops I missed out on that area. Let's hold the shift key and add that. No issues. Now once you have that selection in place let's invert it by pressing ctrl shift i command shift i. Everything except that area is now selected. Now we need to remove it right. We need to hide it. So with the mask selected right here and the foreground color black, press Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill that with black just like this so that only those areas are being targeted. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now we need to take the brush, take a soft round brush inside of general brushes, make sure it is black and then you can erase the extra areas and you can go soft towards the left hand side, towards where the fall off is. So I'm going to slowly and gradually remove this from this side. Now that the side is done, you can also brighten individual areas with a lower flow. So let's say we decrease the flow to about 1 or 2 percent like so. Change the foreground color to white and maybe let's say this area is dark. So just paint white in that particular area. Just for little areas here and there, that's all. Sometimes you may want to zoom out. This seems about right, something we can work with. Also let us increase the flow again and with black there are some areas that are left out. So let us bring back the original stuff right here. Don't worry about the edges right now. There you go. Similarly right here under the nose. Rest everything looks okay. Alright, pretty good. At this point I would love for you to look away for a while, away from the screen, not away from me. I know I'm not that handsome but still. Give your eyes a little bit of break. Watch this video for now and then when you get back to your photo, you would start seeing the things that you would have missed otherwise. So let's go back to the properties of curves, see if you needed any further adjustments. So right now this is what it is. Let us increase it and see if it helps. Let us decrease it and see if it helps. So maybe I'll increase it ever so slightly. Maybe this much. And from there, all we need to do is to just remove the lines and take care of the coloring. Now there are just so many ways to remove the lines. You can even try generative fill for it. To keep stuff simple, let us create a brand new layer and choose the brand new remove tool. 
you can also use the spot healing brush tool you can also use the patch tool absolutely up to you but the remove tool makes it super simple you want to make sure sample all layers is checked and just paint along the lines that is all you need to do and it should be removed but no it's not let me try again like so and it's magically gone there are some dark areas which we'll take care of later but for now let us just remove the lines Now some areas are going to be tricky. So just paint over it, don't worry about it now. We will take care of all of those tricky areas later. See how beautifully they are going away? Again, this area is tricky, so we'll leave it at that. Now let's zoom out a bit and see if there are some discrepancies. Now there are a couple areas that are a bit of a hassle, like this area and this area. You can just try painting over those with the remove tool and try to erase those completely and see what you get. If that doesn't work, you can always dodge and burn. All right, that one worked pretty good. Let's try this one. That is good, but it's creating that weird texture all around. So let's go back and maybe we might have to try the patch tool here. But patch tool doesn't work on an empty lip. So we need to create a stamp visible lip. Don't worry about the colors right now. I know there is this layer added and there are colors all around and it's just not looking right. Don't worry about that right now. We're going to recolor later. But for right now, just above this layer, we will press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. Command, Option, Shift and E if you're on a Mac. This creates a stamp visible layer, a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now. And then let us try selecting the patch tool right here and make a selection of that. And let's try replacing it with something else, like so. Control or Command D to deselect. It's a bit better. Let us select the Remove tool again and take care of the corrections here and there. So, like so. And this area at the bottom. There you go. We have come so far. Now you can take the time to fix little issues here and there, but I think we are pretty much done, except for this tricky area, because no matter how much you try to remove it with the remove tool, it's going to mess it up. Um, it's just not looking right. So you can try the clone stamp tool, dodge and burn differently in those areas. But if you're using the latest version of Photoshop, why not just try generative fill? So with the topmost layer selected right now, because generative fill will take everything into consideration, select the lasso tool right here. And by the way, if you're using a Captain Jack Sparrow version of Photoshop, or for some reason you don't have access to generative fill, you can always try remove tool. It will get you halfway there and then use dodging and burning to improve that. In this case, I'm just going to completely select the tricky area. And then in the contextual taskbar, by the way, if you cannot see it, I always close it. It is distracting. Go to window and make sure you see contextual taskbar. Click on generate a fill and generate. You can also try typing in no, see what you get. And that was pretty fast. So here's the first, second, third. Pick what you like. I really like the third one. And you can always apply liquify to match the shape of this with the original face. Let us hide this bar. Click on this three dots, hide bar. Here is the before, as you can see. And here is the after. There's a bit of change. So let's press Control, Alt, Shift and E. Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac. This creates a merged layer again. Go to filter, convert for smart filters so that whatever filter we apply, we can change the values later. Hit OK. And then go to filter, liquify. Now you can keep the original photo by the side, but I'm just going to eyeball it. With the forward warp tool right here, let's make the brush a bit bigger and just nudge it slowly and gradually towards the right. This seems to be about right. Hit OK. And there we have it, our protrude protruded nose. Now at this point, it seems like we are pretty much done. All is left is coloring. But then again, if you want to just nitpick it, make it absolutely perfect, you would notice that there are some ups and downs here and there. And the reason why that is happening because the lighting was different in the shadow area because of course the main light was not falling there. So you can fix that with high end dodging and burning. And this step is completely optional. However, all you have to do is to create a blank new layer, change the blend mode to soft light, Take the brush and start painting with black and white in certain areas to dodge and burn it. In this case, I'm just going to use a plugin which I highly recommend for high-end dodging and burning. And they have recently updated it so that the plugin now works with black and white photos too. Earlier, it didn't used to. So let's press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. Create a new stamp visible layer. Let's go to Filter. Retouch for me. This is what I have been recommending. Inside of that, Dodge Burn. By the way, if you want to do it manually, I have a video on that as well. You can watch it later. But this does it instantly, absolutely, automatically. And it works on black and white photos flawlessly. Just take a look at it. Everything gone. So here's the before. See all of those discrepancies, ups and downs. And you can increase the blending like so. Now this becomes absolutely soft. Maybe I'm going to keep it this way. 
all the way to 200. Since this is black and white, we don't need any warmth here. This is fine, everything auto. And you wanna make sure soft light layer is checked, hit apply. So that this creates a gray layer. And all you have to do is to change the blend mode to soft light and everything is adjustable. Let's have a look, here's the before. And here is the after, pretty cool. And anytime you think it's too much, you can always decrease the opacity. I'm just gonna go with 80. That's good. If you're interested in the incredible updated Retouch For Me plugins, I'll leave a download link, free trial link, discount link in the description. I recommend that you try it out, try it out on the free trial, try it on your images. And if it looks good to you, there's always a discount code in the description. Now all is left is recoloring this photo. And even that can be done absolutely automatically. So again, press Control, Alt, Shift and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top and then go to filter, convert for smart filters, let us not forget so that we can change the values later, hit OK and then go to filter, neural filters. It may not be perfect, but it's a great start and maybe enough for this one. Inside of neural filters, scroll down and you want to check colorized, that's all. Just check it and there you have it, colorized. <laughs> Fantastic. Now there are a couple areas which you might want to correct. Take your time to do it, but this is fine by me. Scroll down. You can make further adjustments right here. You can also make adjustments on the image directly, but I'm going to leave it at default. Output to smart filter is fine. Hit OK. And there you have it, wonderfully colored. Now there are other areas where we are losing the colors. If you have a look at the before and after, here's the before, here's the after. Shadows are gone. Other areas are not OK. So here is what to do. The simplest of the steps. Select the bottom most adjustment layer, hold the shift key and select the topmost adjustment layer, press Control or command G to group it all up. And let us name this group by double clicking on the text, remove shadow. And then create a mask right here. I recommend holding the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button to create a negative mask. Don't worry, your work is still in there. Select the brush with white as the foreground color. Select a soft round brush like this. Just paint over the shadow areas broadly. That's all. There you go. Easily gone. And only paint over the areas which you want to take care of. Like so. How wonderful. Now that I look at it, then that is why break is important. I forgot to remove the shadow from the ear section. So um, you can do it yourself. Take your time to do it. But that is how to incredibly remove shadows. Maybe bring back a little bit of those areas as well because the entire color was changed. So here is the overall before and here is the after. Crazy, crazy difference, isn't it? So that is how to remove harsh, impossible, dark shadows in Photoshop. And I really hope again that you remove all of those from your life as well. All you need to do is to target the shadow areas. And there are several ways to do it. You can do it with masks, or like in this video, you can do it with Blendif. And then we have to repair the edges and finally take care of the color and the undulations. And that's broadly all there is to it. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and incredible people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and making videos like this possible. I'll see you in my next one. Thanks again so much for watching. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Do